Hi, welcome to Easy Exposure, the tutorials about photography. In one of my previous videos, I was showing you how to resize your pictures for web in Photoshop. But I got a few requests where you're asking me, can we resize our pictures for web using Lightroom? And the answer is yes. And honestly, personally, I prefer Lightroom for resizing the pictures against Photoshop because I think just the workflow is better and it's faster for me. So in this video I will show you how to do it. But since you asked me about Lightroom I would assume that you are a little bit familiar with this program or at least you know how to import your pictures into Lightroom. So let's get started. or downsample your images in Lightroom by exporting them. But before you export them, you have to choose the images you want to export first. You can choose a single image you want to export. You just highlight it, click with your mouse on the image. Or by holding shift, you can highlight the images which are next to each other, like this see the images which are next to each other highlighting and I'm holding the shift with my finger. Also if you want to choose the images which are not next to each other you can hold command and this will let you to highlight the images which are not next to each other. But the method I usually use is I'm adding the images I want to export to a quick collection and to add images to quick collection you have to click on this dot right here next to the image and as soon as you click on this dot the image will be added to quick collection also the other way to add the images to the quick collection is to right click and you have here the menu add to quick collection and this image will be added to quick collection as well so let's choose just a few images like right here and now I'm going into quick collection and images I want to export are here this way I usually make my choice if I don't want to just export one image but I have a group of images I chose from the whole shoot and I want to export them I add them to the quick collection and Whenever they're in quick collection, I just highlight them all by holding the shift. So I'm clicking on first image and the last image while holding the shift and all of them are highlighted. Then I click export. And as soon as I click export, we have an export uh, window popped up. Let's take a closer look at this export window. First of all, here you have a choice. Either you're exporting images to hard drive on your computer or external hard drive or on CD or DVD. I'm going to export my files on the hard drive. So I choose hard drive. I'm going to put them on my desktop. And you can specify the folder. You can choose the folder from here and I will put my files on the desktop. And also I will put them in a subfolder and I call it Hawaii resized also you can rename your files by clicking this and you can choose something from this drop-down menu or add it and add your custom text. I will call it Hawaii resized and then I will add a sequence number. See so you can see this window. I added the sequence number from here and I click done and see the name appeared right here. You can also start your sequence from a different numbers. Let's say if I type the f here the 4, my numbers start from 0, 4. 
if you need to do this for some reason you can do it too also we will have to um, set the file settings and when you export info web you want to export it as a jpeg srgb is fine and here you can set your image quality uh, i usually never export my files for web in the quality of 100 because the higher the quality you will set the bigger your file size is going to be and i promise you you probably won't see any difference between 180 or even 170. you can try to export it with a different quality and compare them for yourself but i'm almost sure you might not even see the difference also if you need to limit your file size to a specific number you can also do that and then if you limit your file size, the Lightroom will choose the quality. As you can see, now we can't really control the quality anymore if we click checked limits file size too. If you're exporting videos, you can check this, but we don't, are not exporting the videos, so this one doesn't really matter. Here we also uh, have to set our file size. And we either can set the width and height, or also we have a couple more options. You can use, for example, long edge. And for our forum, let's choose long edge of 800. And for web, resolution 300 is way too high. The resolution of 72 is a standard resolution for web. You can also add some sharpening to your image and here you have options screen matte paper and glossy paper matte paper and glossy paper it's when you're about to print your images but for the web you just choose screen sharpening and you have low standard and high it all depends on your image and how much sharpening you already added to your image in the lightroom but most of the time i just use standard sharpening but you can try any of them and see how they work We're gonna leave the metadata section unchecked and move on to watermarks. We can actually add watermarks to our image and we can either choose from the ones which already exist or add a new watermark. And here you have an image with a sample watermark and here you can choose the text of your watermark. Also you can add the logo. Uh, if you have it in JPEG or PNG, a design logo, you can add it as your watermark right here by choosing the file wherever it's on your computer. But for now, let's add the text watermark. And you can choose a different font. And you can choose the style of the font and alignment and the color. Okay. And add the shadow to the watermark. It usually helps to uh, help watermark to kind of pop up of the image. And we can control also the shadow offset, radius, and opacity. Also, we can uh, control the opacity of watermark itself. We can make it stronger, more visible, or less visible. Also, its size and the position. And here we can also control the position of watermark. And we can also rotate it. So when you are done with designing your watermark in this window, you can just click on save. And you can give it a name. Let's call it my watermark. And create. And now your new watermark is in the list of watermarks and also if you are planning to do something with those images after exporting you can also choose from this menu either you want to show them in the finder open in photoshop or some other application you have this choice but for now we will do nothing with it and just click export and you can see your export progress right here see the Lightroom is exporting your images. 
So let's hide the Lightroom and see if our images have been exported. So we go to the new folder right here, Hawaii Resized, and there are images inside of it. Let's open them and see you have an image with a watermark. Of course, this watermark is way too big for this image. You want to be a little smaller and not that distracting, but this is just an example. I hope you could follow along and this video was helpful for you and from now on you would be resizing all your pictures before you posting them online because I think in general it's much better practice to do so. So see you next time, bye bye.